This episode of Amateur Traveler is sponsored by Thrifty Traveler Premium. Travel more for less. Amateur Traveler, episode 870. Today, the Amateur Traveler talks about meter maids and manta rays and surf clubs, lifesavers, lorikeets, and theme parks as we go to the Gold Coast of Queensland. This is Chris Christensen from the Amateur Traveler. Let's talk about the Gold Coast of Queensland. I'd like to welcome back to the show Leanne and Lyle McCabe, who have come to talk to us about the Gold Coast of Queensland. Welcome back. Hello. Hello, Chris. Nice How to be back. I say welcome back. They were on the show relatively recently, episode 819, traveling to Asturias, Spain. But this time, we're a little closer to home for you. That's correct, yeah. We're just down the road from where we live to the Gold Coast. Excellent. So you live in the... Sunshine Coast. <laughs> on the we Sunshine live, Coast. Yeah, we live in the Sunshine Coast, that's correct. And we're about an hour from Brisbane, which is... And then the Gold Coast is about 45 minutes from there. So it's on basically on the border of New South and, Wales. And put it on the map for those of us who are don't have an Australia map memorized in our heads here. <laughs> it's on the east coast of Australia, almost smack bang in the middle. And yeah. why should someone go to the Gold Coast of Australia? Lots of reasons, really, isn't there? You know, yeah. we, we go for lots of different reasons, but I guess the main one would be the stunning beaches. And I know lots of places have stunning beaches, but this would have to, I think, be Australia's best strip of beaches, and it's the best surfing beach area in Australia. It has a really interesting nightlife too. It's quite young nightlife, but some great sort of things that we're going to talk about later. It's the nature. It's right there at the mountains as well, and it's, what would you say, like adventure? Yeah, for sure. Lots of adventure stuff. It's got a nickname of the Glitter Strip or our Glamour Strip. It's not Las Vegas by any stretch of the imagination, but it's got that feel about it. The the people that live there, there's quite a large demographic. That You've got the young trendies with the males with the muscles and the tattoos (laughs) and the young girls with the fillers and the tattoos. It's all glamour. And then you've got a lot of wealthy retired people down there. So the real estate's pretty expensive on the coast there. There's just such a variety of things to do. Yeah, and the amount of restaurants and the quality of the restaurants are fabulous. Mm. Let's get into what there is to do. What kind of itinerary are you going to recommend for us? We're going to start in the middle of the Gold Coast, and it's called Surface Paradise. And one of the things I'll just quickly add is it's also a good place to visit because it's got its own international airport, and it's very close to Brisbane, so it's easy to get to. So, But, yeah, Surface Paradise is what... I guess most people, when they think of the Gold Coast, that's what they see in their mind, isn't it? When they have the famous avenue, which is called Cavill Avenue, and it's like a pedestrian-only strip. And I recommend that people arrive there and just explore that area. You know, you've got all the quirky sort of wax museums and Ripley's Believe It or Not and all that sort of fun stuff. And as Lyle said, you've got the glamour sort of strip. And there's just, there's about 37, I think, at the moment. They're adding to that kilometres of walkways, some big, wide, three-metre wide walkways right along the front. If you don't want to be on the beach, you can just walk along and see the stereotype, typical lifesavers with the, the flags and, and, and all that sort of stuff. So it's just And a when great you say spot. lifesavers, are, we're not talking about the candy. You're talking about the lifeguards is what oh, we would call yeah, them? yeah, that's what yeah, we yeah. call yeah. them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so they're the guides in the the red and yellow here. We have, that's their, so they're, they're on the beach and they do it, they're, patrolling them and just there's always so much happening on that beachfront yeah. isn't there? and a little bit of the history of the gold coast the, uh, the gold coast was a little bit what well, probably started to develop in the, the 1960s so it's not that old and it was they used to call the government in those days the white shoe brigade so there was a fair and it knowledge there's a fair bit of corruption with developers and that sort of thing. The height of the buildings, which was probably a little bit higher than what would normally be. And then, and they introduced, a, this is, I find it funny, and they still do it today. They have meter mates. Now, that started in, back in 1965, and it was when they introduced parking meters into the strip. Someone came up with the idea that they should have ladies, attractive ladies, walking around with gold lame bikinis <laughs> feeding oh coins <laughs> into... And it was like a little bit of a lottery. So if the meter maid put money in your meter, you were lucky. So not everybody got it. And actually, funnily enough, there's a, a Beatles song called Lovely Rita, 
and it's lovely Rita Meter Maze, and that's actually where that song came from. So I had no idea. And yeah. when you say meter maze, hang on a second. For me, a meter maid is the woman who gives you the ticket, but you're saying this is the one who keeps you from getting the ticket because she's putting money in random meters. Yeah, and and, and, okay. and it must have worked. But they don't still... do that today. Still, I'm assuming. Yeah, still, they still today. Do it that. Yeah, see. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's a cla- and okay. that's t- and that gives you a bit of an idea of, of basically oh, service is. paradise yeah. as, as like. Yeah, uh, but not far from this area is one of the sort of highlights that people go to the Gold Coast for and it's called the Q1 building and okay. it's the highest building and it's not one that was built in the corruption days. It's, no. It's, no. it's quite new and I wouldn't do this myself but you can, it's actually got Australia's highest external building climb. Now what that means is you go up to the 77th floor and you can go out onto the launch platform and you hook yourself up and you're, out, you're outside on this building and you climb a 30 metre staircase up to the top right and you can see basically 360 degree views of the Gold Coast and and the mountains behind which we're going to tell you about in in a minute as well but if you don't want to do that I can see the horrified look on your face Chris (laughs) (laughs) I was just just looking at a picture of the building and it's it's high it's, it's tall. It's high, right? <laughs> yeah. So, but if you don't want to go outside, which I would choose not to, you can just go up to the observation decks, and that's you know you pay to go into that, and that's like a, a great big area which is all glassed in, and you can get the same pretty well the same views I would imagine. But there's also restaurants and bars and cafes up there, and and that's a, a must do if you haven't been to the Gold Coast before to do that because it's pretty iconic right there on the main surface paradise beach area of the Gold Coast, right? Yeah, but probably what the like surface paradise and that is really known for it's the beaches. The beaches are beautiful white sand, mm. soft like powder sand. The actual area around those beaches is like a crescent shape. Basically, what that gives is standard surf. You basically any time and anywhere that you're going to get a decent swell and you're going to be able to surf and then right along that coast there which I think there's about 71 kilometers maybe of, of beaches and some of the best breaks in the world it's pretty much world famous for the surfing part of it as well and when you say world famous and best breaks in the world is this for people who are learning to surf or is this for expert surfers Probably a bit of both, but they do okay. have a surf competition like on the circuit at the southern end at Snapper Rocks. That's a nice little spot down the southern end. Yeah, a lot of the our Australian World Surfing Championships are out of the Gold Coast. Mm-hmm. They come out of that area. Mick Fanning and all these sorts of blokes that, that held World Championships for a long time, basically. From the Gold Coast. Yeah, Holmes mm-hmm. got the Gold Coast. Okay. Hmm. I couldn't and name a single world-class surfer, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of one because they've, they, they've got this massive big surf shop that we... That, that was um, Mick Fanning. Oh, okay. There you go. Mick Fanning. <laughs> it's the only one I know too. <laughs> so that, that would fill in a pretty big day, just checking out that main area of surface paradise for, for sure. And we have got a few things that we suggest to do at night, but we thought we might just put them at the end. Is that okay? Like a couple sure. of... Yeah, okay. So day two... Now, this is another half must do when you're in this area. It's you actually leave the Gold Coast and head about 40 kilometers up 550 meters. You, you're going to have to do the conversion, Chris, for the feet. That's okay. <laughs> and that's right behind the Gold Coast to a little mount, like the mount area, which is called Mount Tambourine. It's actually what they call the green behind the gold, the Gold Coast. And then you've got oh. the green mountain, and it's on what they call the scenic rim. Now, this part of the scenic rim, as I said, is 550 meters. And it's about eight kilometres long and four kilometres wide and there's a little town dotted up the top of this and you go from the beach and you head up to... Basically into the hinterland, which yeah. is more rainforest. Yeah, lush rainforest, exactly. Okay. Yeah. And that's absolutely beautiful. And so there's quite a few things you can do up there, but to get the lay of the land, you would certainly start in the little town of Tambourine or North Tambourine as it's called and... It's one of those gorgeous little quirky, crafty sort of areas where they've got the shops called the Gallery Walk. So, you know, people are making their own pottery and paintings and okay. they've got little shops where they sell and there's organic cafes and just beautiful. At this time of year, the jacarandas are flowering and the agapanthas are flowering. It's just the most 
uh, scenic spot, isn't it? You know? Yeah. Yeah. So the jacarandas, if you don't know, I don't know. Do you have jacarandas? I, yeah. We do yeah. have, in my area, we have jacarandas. Yeah, so, so the beautiful I do purple. know that. I'm not sure that everyone does, though. Okay, so they're these big trees that have the prettiest purple colour you can ever imagine, these mm-hmm. gorgeous flowers. And and then the flowers fall, and it's like purple little petal rain. It's that, even snow. It yeah, is. Yeah. It lands on the footpath, so that's covering the streets, and it's beautiful. But there are a couple of little walks you can do, and, and we'd re- recommend the Rainforest Skywalk, wouldn't we? Yeah, it's about a 1.5k uh, And you're up walk. in the trees. Yeah, it's high through the middle of the canopy, Yeah. so that's beautiful. Not far from there is Lamington National Park, mm. and that's about 160k of just hikes and things, and they're pretty well-maintained hiking trails there's also hot air ballooning there you can do hot air ballooning that's mm. about 250 bucks per person which after doing it in queenstown that's pretty reasonable <laughs> yeah. but it's like another world yeah so you've got these great big trees with the big buttresses down the bottom haven't yeah. you and then they've got the root systems trying to grow down so you're walking through the beautiful rain you've got the ferns and the tree ferns and the bird life that you can just hear walking through those rainforest walks is amazing so sure. and what i'm seeing is green exactly the green behind moss the moss everywhere yeah. Clearly a lot of rain, so yes. I'm bringing up weather-appropriate clothes. Yeah, yes. But you're not cold. You're not. It doesn't get right. very cold. No. There's also horse riding up there. We right. haven't done that. And there's lots of waterfalls. There's the Witches Waterfall Walk, and there's some lookout areas as well. You can hike to the lookouts where you can actually see back down to the ocean. And there's nothing better than seeing the green rolling hills. Here. Yeah, it's almost like the, the hills roll into the ocean. Yeah. It's nice. Mm. And if you're not into the hiking, as I said, there's that beautiful little town area you can explore. But there's also wineries up there and coffee plantations. You can explore hmm. those. Do you have area. a particular coffee plantation or a winery that you recommend? Cirame Wines is a good one. They do wine tours from the Gold Coast and you can go and visit Cirame. I think they more have a cellar door up there. I don't yeah. sure they make their wines. Yeah, and the okay. Cirame, they had to do a lot of blends. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a whole day just exploring up there for sure. And there are day tours if you don't drive. And I'm sure, I didn't actually check, but I'm sure there would be buses that go up sure. to, to Mount Tambourine because it's so close. And, and I'm sure locals live up that way and come down as well. Um, yeah, I know some and, people, especially coming from here, from North America, are a little intimidated by the driving on the other side of the road. Although, <laughs> tell me about as we are. It, <laughs> as we yeah, are. I didn't find it terribly uh, difficult in Australia just yes. because there's just more space there than other places I've driven on the left. I'd say it was probably the easiest place for me as an American to drive on the wrong side of the road for me. It's not that far, though. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. So you could easily hire a car. And and then... I think I only traumatized a couple other motorists <laughs> doing the left turn <laughs> and wanting to turn into right. the right lane instead of the left lane. Uh, yeah, so. it's... One they're of the they're probably in, okay by now. So, well, one of the things in the Gold Coast is they've got like a light rail tram system, yeah. which basically goes right up the middle. It's about twenty k, and it starts at Broad Beach, which is the southern end, the southern end, and finishes at Hen- Helen's Vale, That's which northern. is uh, the northern end. And Helen's Vale is where all the theme parks are, mm. and it's so cheap. We we use that all the time, even though we have a car to get around mm-hmm. the Gold Coast itself. See, Leanne doesn't like driving it on Australian roads, and she's Australian. And yeah. it's not because <laughs> the traffic's a problem. Leanne just hates being I the car. I don't like driving. So but basically, we jump on the tram. tram that goes right up the middle of the surface paradise to these theme parks. And then once you get off there, there's little shuttle buses that go straight into the theme parks. Mm. So you can come in, get your apartment, park your car, you're there for a week, you don't have to use it. That's what we like. We'll talk a bit about the theme parks, which ones we've got at the end, if you like. I know, I jumped in there. (laughs) Spoiler alert. (laughs) It's a tease. It's okay. (laughs) Thank you. Coming from... He's the expert. I know, but coming from the state... I feel like that's what you do just before you do a commercial. So this is probably where I just put the commercial here. There we go. There we go. (laughs) I came out of the pandemic with a bank of unused airline points and a desire to do more travel. But finding cheap flights and points and miles award space can be tough. Wouldn't it be great to get alerts when flight prices drop or when there are deals on that business class seat I really want? Thrifty Traveler Premium does just that. They find the best deals from over 200 U.S. and Canadian departure airports. 
Thrifty Traveler's flight deal experts are searching 24-7 for flight deals so you don't have to. These deals are bookable with cash or with points and miles from coach to first class. So some recent deals that I thought were interesting were Minneapolis to Europe for only 24,000 miles, New Zealand for under 55,000 miles, and Costa Rica for $399. Never miss another incredible award deal by subscribing to Thrifty Traveler Premium. Use the code AT10 for $10 off your first year at thriftytraveler.com slash premium. That's thriftytraveler.com slash premium and the code AT10. And thanks and thanks to Thrifty Traveler for sponsoring this episode of Amateur Traveler. So we've been along the beach of day one, day two. We've done all that beautiful rainforest green, as you were talking about, the green area. And day three, now this is something that we haven't done for a while, but if you haven't done it here, obviously other places in the world do it too. This is a whale watching cruise Mm -hmm. and we've got a favorite one it's called Kokomo Cruises we like them because they actually guarantee that you see whales right if you don't see whales they'll let you go again or refund so that's pretty cool I have to say just so people know the Australian whale watching is so good because it's actually called the whale highway and they're humpback whales and they start obviously down in Antarctic and swim all the way up the east coast of Australia all the way up to northern Australia where Mm -hmm. they have their babies and then they swim all the way back and so actually getting them on the way back I think is a bit better because they've got the little calves and they are so active we can actually see them where we are luckily but it's nothing like being out on the boat and just seeing them so close and they're jumping and so that's a good few hours so they would be I'm I'm trying to do this all backwards in my head Okay, because in June to July is when they're in North Australia. They're, they're starting from June, going all the way up and back. to. You just can't pick it. Some people start seeing them. I've got family further down the coast, and they say the whales are on their way up. And okay. just now, so what are, what are we now? Not quite October. October, so yeah. it's not quite November. You get the old ones still going back. It's pretty okay. much over, but... Like, there's so many of them. Chris. They used to be on the brink of extinction. That, that's the right. thing. And now they're saying, like, this year, there's well over 50,000 of them. Okay. That's, so you, you're going you're gonna to see them. It's just one of my favourite things to do, especially when we have visitors come. If you haven't done that before, it's it's pretty amazing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and it's, I think the tour that they do on Kokomo, it's about two and a half hours. And But the thing is, you're not just seeing whales. You're seeing sea turtles. you got pods of dolphins going around you. That's one of the things about Australia. It's not only the, the land uh, animals, but you, the, the amount of things in uh, fish and, and mm. that in the ocean and the waters are so clear yeah. you just see them yeah you can mm. and yeah and after the tour you've got snacks and all that sort of stuff and it's a big open sort of boat so it's easier to see it's not like you're inside like it's quite like canopy it's really easy viewing from there mm-hmm. yeah and they do stop so that the patrons can do snorkeling and that sort of thing okay. as well. Yeah. There's reefs down there. They're, they're not as good as the Great Barrier Reef, but they're still pretty enticing, so you can do that. And as far as the snorkelling is concerned, is that the colour of the the coral is always at the top of the water anyway. So yeah, it's magnificent. Really good. I'm going to talk about talking, snorkelling in a, in a moment. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. I've got... Oh, that's another <laughs> tease. That's another tease. Are we, are we already in another commercial break? Boy, that's... <laughs> 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 I should have worked for commercial oh, TV, yeah. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and so where you leave to go out to the whale watching is from Southport Marina. And when you come back in, I'd recommend you spend some time there because it's where the Southport Yacht Club is. Yeah. It's a massive big marina. It's got super yachts. It's actually got the biggest floating berth for Australia, they can take yachts up to 130 metres there. If you're into that sort of looking at boats and that sort of thing, apparently it's we wandered around there, found there's a nice little pub there to have lunch. Yeah, there was a surf club, there's a pub there, yeah, there's and the yacht, the, club, the yacht and, club, yeah, that's so it's a nice little marine area to explore as well. Yeah, yeah. and just with those Kokomo cruises too, they do sunset cruises as well. If you're not doing the whales, yeah. That is true. If it's out of season though, if and if you want to do us like a cruise, there's they do offer 
you said sunset, but they do canal cruises too. Like the Gold Coast is built on a lot of canals, and I know that's nothing unique, but it is a nice thing to do. I just love being out on the water. It gives you a different view and perspective. Yeah, of but as I said city, earlier, the real estate in on the Gold Coast on the water is is pretty expensive. So to do those canal cruises, to look at the beautiful mansions there, yeah, it's a yeah. bit special. And you see the canals. I'm looking at a map of the Gold Coast, and yes. it is quite extensive. If you told me that these were streets mm. and regular blocks and things like that, I would believe you, but it's quite an extensive set of canals, it looks it like. It is. Yeah. And I think that's very desirable, as Lyle was saying, to live on the, the canals. Interesting. Yeah. So, that's, it's been a busy few days. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But day four, now this is one of my favourite things. I always say that, but what I would do is then head down, either hop on the, the G link, that's called the tram, the light or, rail. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Or, or drive down to the right down to the southern end, which we call Cool and Gatta. Now, Cool and Gatta is actually on the Queensland New South Wales border, so you okay. can be on one side of the street and you're in Queensland, and on the other side of the street you're in New South Wales, which is actually then called Tweed Heads. But the problem with that is, New South Wales has daylight savings time, and <laughs> Queensland doesn't. I did not realise that. Okay. Yeah. So the other problem was obviously when COVID was in, New South Wales had different restrictions than what Queensland did. And they couldn't come into Queensland and yet they lived on one side of the road and worked on the other. Oh, my gosh. I know. It was horrific. (laughs) That that was horrific. But it is quite fun being in that one side of the street is the other. So this is Cool and Gatta. And that's where we're talking about earlier, the the Snapper Rocks. And so when you're down this way... It's certainly worth is it's not called Snapper Rocks, it's, it's actually Rainbow Bay. So there's Rainbow Bay which goes around to Snapper Rocks. There's this really iconic old wooden surf club there. It's just typically Australian. You've got the veranda outside and the whole beer on the, the veranda overlooking the palm trees and the surf break there. Yeah. We, we always go there. Every time we go to the Gold Coast, we always head to that surf club. Yeah, yeah. Just because it's so beautiful. And then around the headland is if you like walking, you hit the Tweed River and there's a lovely walkway all the way along that, the Tweed River. And once again, you there's people scuba diving and snorkeling in there, but it's a beautiful view across the Tweed River over to Tweed Head. So that's worth exploring, having a look around there. But the other thing that's down this way, which is so amazing, is Corumban Wildlife Sanctuary. And okay. it's not quite a stray zoo, but it has lots of Australian wildlife there from echidnas to wombats to wallabies Tasmanian devils like all this they have all those there and it's like this big I don't know 11 hectare sort of park area and there's a little train that gets you around and play areas and cafes and things but what it's most famous for is the lorikeet feeding now you you know what a lorikeet is the rainbow Mm -hmm. lorikeets they are the prettiest birds you'll ever see and they're cheeky as, and they're noisy. And they've been doing these feedings for 80 years. You actually don't have to pay to go into the park to see this. And they do it hmm. every morning about 8.30 and then the afternoon about 4. Yeah. And the, 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 so the, they're wild birds, and they just fly in because they oh, know. okay. Yeah. I'll give you the, a bit, bit of the history on that. The guy that owned the property originally was a beekeeper and sold flowers commercially. And he came up with the idea of feeding the lorikeets to stop them getting into his flowers and his honey. So hmm. that's how it started. Yeah. And I, I just think that's so clever. Yeah. And, and they've been doing it ever since. Yeah. So the, as Land says, the wild birds just come in yeah. and they get fed. And, and they, they do... land on your hands and they land on your head. You really need to see it. It's and what's happened? Mm. Fabulous. And what's there happened from there is they've actually now got an animal hostable there, mm. so that they treat all sorts of animals, whether it be kangaroos or wallabies that are hit on the roads mm. and that sort of thing. Yeah. But so it's similar to Australia Zoo that way. All the nat- natural animals yeah. that, that are injured get taken to these places where they've got vet- vets there to help them. Yeah. So you can do like breakfast with the koalas, all those sort of fun things to do. It's, it's actually really nice cuddling a koala. Yes. Yeah, and, nice. and interestingly, Queensland's the only place you can do it. In New South Wales, they've banned you from oh. actually holding the koalas. Oh, uh, probably so for good reason. Maybe yeah. not. But yeah, the, the big thing is to get the photo f- with the koala. Obviously, mm-hmm. you've got wallabies, kangaroos. There's also a reptile area there where your kids can have their first encounter with a snake, <laughs> uh, if that's what you like. But we uh, do have some really unique 
bird life and wildlife and mm-hmm. you can see a lot of it here so they don't have the overseas animals they just have like the australian the cockatoos and all the good stuff but it's definitely and there is a croc just one just one lyle's favorite animal lyle, lyle, yeah crocodile. the big boss the big boss they, i think they call it <laughs> like? yeah but yeah. he's been there a while yeah so that's a really fun thing to do and that's going to take you probably three or four hours oh yeah after you've been okay yeah, and who doesn't want to see some of those? I think wombats are my favourite animal. I just love them. So, and why do you what's unique well, they're cute. about? They're, they're cute yeah. as they they just look so cute. But they do. I know. Like Chris would know this. He would. He's been <laughs> travel podcasting for eighteen years. But wombats are the only animal that do cube shape poo. I actually had heard that. Yes. See? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it has yeah. come up on the podcast before. Oh, no. so. have, yeah, have, <laughs> actually, I know that because I listened to that podcast episode. It was on Tasmania. Yeah, and, exactly. Yes, and the gentleman on that, he was like worked for National Geographic, and I think yep, and he, yep. yeah, he did a great job telling you all about Tasmania. Yeah, it made me want to go back there as well. Yeah, cube-shaped poo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's move on. I'm so surprised you knew that, Chris. <laughs> no, I knew he knew it. I listened to it. <laughs> So day five. Now, stick with me here, Chris and Lyle, because it's probably not what the boys like to do, but no trip to the, no trip to the Gold Coast would be complete without going to Queensland or a biggest shopping centre called Pacific Fair. Now, I'm not a shopper either, and I don't really always want to go shopping, but this shopping centre is, and they're always doing it up. It has the most beautiful outdoor areas where... You don't even know you're in a shopping centre. It's got like a food court, like Asian food sort of areas and they have a stage in the middle. There's always performers on and there's, you can go up the stairs and it's like you're in a tropical sort of restaurant, a tiki bar sort of thing as well. And it's just a really nice, relaxed shopping centre to walk around. And most people want to buy something to take home. It's certainly worth a visit to there, don't you reckon? And Chris, what my, most boys do like doing just across the road is the casino. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. You're not a casino. No, no, I'm too tight with yeah, my money yeah. to, to, but, to gamble. But it, I have uh, too many math classes to enjoy a casino. But, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. we don't go to, to gamble. But, but they do have fabulous shows and stuff like that. Okay. We have been, yeah, we've yeah. been to some great shows. Yeah, there. they do put on fabulous shows at the casino. But so Pacific Fair, it's right, once again, you get off the, the tram and you, it's half a block away and you can explore that. And then... It's on the area that what we call Broad Beach, and I think if I haven't said this already, it's probably my favourite part of. The yeah, Gold I'll put Coast. my hand up for that too. I reckon Broad Beach is the, is our favourite. The sort of the ocean front there, the range of uh, restaurants and cafes there, and there's always something happening. They've either got some handmade markets or they've got a music festival or it's just got a great atmosphere that Broad Beach Park, and it okay. also has the Currawa Surf Club. Now this describes the Australian surf clubs. Each beach basically has lifesavers that look after it and they have what we call a, a club now they're not just like a wooden sort of structure they're they're a full-on restaurant bar sort of area and they're mm-hmm. always built on the best real estate so this <laughs> Karawa surf club is literally on the beach it's worth going there for your lunch and just taking in the views they've got the coastal walks outside the path so yeah. everybody's walking past and then you've got a little bit of sand dune and the beach. The views are beautiful, especially with a nice cold Aussie beer. Yeah, just to explain, because they're a charity service industry, the Queensland government leases the the land to them for nothing, Mm. right? So they're not paying rent, that sort of thing. And they get to pick the best places. Mm. and, And then they've also allowed to have what we call gaming machines, poker machines, slot machines in an area. And they can have up to about, I think it's 280. That's why they can build these enormous modern facilities. Hmm. And as some of that money obviously goes to help the club, the the actual lifesavers, and the rest of it goes to the social members side of it and also the community so members they give yeah. back to the community and so they've you know they've got all the surf boats the all the gear mm-hmm. all their training and that sort of stuff so. yeah so they're pretty impressive buildings mm. and they're right along the on yeah. the coast but there. that's one of my favorite that one there at yeah. broad beach the Currawa surf club so okay. i describe broad beach as maybe the sophisticated part of the gold coast because mm. the, the restaurants the there. choice of restaurants is just yeah. Amazing. I, and I'm getting a Miami Beach with an Australian accent. 
but okay. yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Actually, just up from Broad Beach, there is Miami Beach. Yeah, we, we do. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you're right on. Yeah. So that's a really a great day to, to spend at that end of the Gold Coast. Yeah, but yeah, definitely check out Pacific Fair. We always go there and have a look, maybe have lunch or something. There's also got like big cinema p- complexes and stuff like that. If you do want to go to the movies, that sort of thing, that's where you go. And then day six, we're going to take you back out on the water. It's a pretty full on day. It's a long day, but you can actually do a day trip from the Gold Coast to Morton Island, which is, you can act, we can see Morton Island from here. From here meaning Brisbane, so it's further oh. no- north. From past here, Brisbane. It's probably off Brisbane, where we are at the Sunshine Coast. I can look south and see it, and from the Gold Coast, you'd, you'd look north. So it's a triangle, probably. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. But so the shipping channel to go into Brisbane to Brisbane comes past, it goes through the Sunshine Coast, past our place. Yes. Then okay. goes you go into Brisbane, and it runs be, past the Morton Island as well. Oh, yeah, I'm saying. Go, go, goes past Morton Island. Yeah. So Morton Islands, yeah, the ships go in between Morton Island and, and us, Brisbane and, Gold and the Island. mainland. Yeah, yes. and, and it's not far. Really. Yeah. So you can see it is what I'm saying, but it's a, it's a, it's a full on day. And the reason you probably, if you'd love water and obviously the checking out the, the, the different stuff to do off the Gold Coast is you, this is a fabulous area because what they've done over the years, I think they started in the 60s, is they started sinking old ships and there's about 15 sunk there now. They're called the hmm. Tangaluma Wrecks. So the resort is called Tangaluma Resort. Yeah, so that's on Morton Island, that's right. And so you take the ship over and you hop off at Tangaluma Resort and it's maybe a 10-minute walk up the beach or you can get the boat and you would go snorkelling. Now, because they've been there quite so long, and they're actually sunk to make a bit of a reef, but also a safe haven for boats to shelter there. And, okay. But now there's over a hundred different fish species and there's coral growing on it. So it's got this like wreck, shipwreck feel about it. And but with the coral and the fish, and we've actually we've scuba dived there, and we saw hammerhead sharks. Yeah, like, yeah. But mm. you can basically walk off the land, off the sand, and it's not like you're right out in the middle of the ocean. So you can take a boat or a tour around, but you can actually swim in from the beach and snorkel around here. It's as close as you're going to get to the Great Barrier Reef by not going any further north. It's got that sort of the feel about the, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, it's, yeah, so if you look at it, Google it, you'll see generally they've got the aerial shots of the wrecks right. under the water. That's definitely worth doing, isn't it? With, you know, yeah, whether you're yeah. a scuba diver or a snorkeler. Yeah. Yeah, and what's your favourite thing to do there? Uh, they actually do dolphin feeding. And once again, they're wild dolphins, like mm-hmm. the lorikeets, and they've been fed for so long that they swim right into shore just you know, take a little fish out of your hand. Yeah, so you can hold it out and they come and take a fish out of your hand. And uh, I did that. I've got the photo. I've got the biggest grin on my face. It's just, uh, it's so cool because dolphins, are, they're just adorable, right? And they're not being coerced or anything. They just know if I feed, if I turn up at whatever time it is, they have a couple of times a day and they, they get fed. And they yeah, want, but when, but, and just to clarify that when you do that... Oh, it's organised and structured. It's, yeah, it's yeah. very structured and yes. you're not allowed to have anything on your hands you're not allowed to have sunscreen on and it's normally about four o'clock in the afternoon so it's not so bad yeah they're very uh, careful all. Yeah, yeah of how it's they protect done. the dog and there's yeah. only so many people on the beach and mm. that yeah. sort of thing but it's yeah I, I did like that like doing the tour to tangalumi lunch is included it's a full day out and if you want to they there's a couple of things you can do too i can see them from our window which is incredible but they've got sand dunes like quite big sand dunes um, we haven't done this my, my eldest son has and you can toboggan down the, the sand dunes that doesn't appeal to me but i know it would to some people <laughs> oh yeah but there's, they've got the quad bikes and all that sort of yeah. stuff as well and yeah. the transparent bottom kayaks and things yeah. so, that's yeah. for the sharks so they can see what they're going to eat yeah so they're the bottom so that's for them yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But I definitely, I if, if you're game enough to, to try the snorkeling there is is amazing. Yeah, you're going to be exhausted by the time you get home though. We always find like days out doing the snorkeling or the scuba diving is sure. Um, yeah, or it's, it's, you're pretty tired. And just the other thing too about all these water things that you can do, at the temperature of the water up here probably in winters probably about 18 degrees Celsius. Celsius, yeah. and it gets up to about in the middle of summer to about 26. Degrees yeah. Celsius. I'm assuming that's about 70 something degrees, maybe 80 Chris degrees. It's almost 80 degrees yeah. Fahrenheit, yeah. So it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's really nice. And there's really very little chill. Factor. And and being this far south, you don't have to worry about, as you do further north, the stingers. The, the box jellyfish. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We so don't get any of that. No, not down here. We, so it. it's, a, it's, a, it's a good spot for snorping safely. <laughs> yeah. And then, oh, we come to day seven and. 
Look, for me, my personality, I would probably like a nice relaxing day. <laughs> and I, there's so many different spa sort of things you, you can do at the Gold Coast, depending on which area you're staying in and what hotel they, they could offer mm-hmm. that. I'd probably find a little spot on the beach and have a swim because the water's beautiful and the surf's beautiful. But there are some other things. That, that's what I would do. But we might give you a couple of other things that you could do if you've only got the week and you want to fit everything in. As Lyle mentioned before, the Gold Coast is home of Australia's best theme parks so we've got movie world dream world and wet and wild, wet and wild. they're in helen's vale and they're so all across the, the road from each other yeah so that's the one where you can catch the light rail and then mm. just get the saddle bus to the theme parks and you get a park pass to go to all of them and yeah yeah you can get yeah four day park mm. pass and a three day mm. park pass and a, and a single day park pass i've been, been to all of them and i love them and i've been with kids and i've been on my own and i do find them fun especially wet and wild that, that's a lot of fun well wet and wild's basically just uh, what do you call them giant the, water slides Jordan, and, yeah sure. water slides and, and that sort floating of around on a tube yeah on yeah yeah, yeah. I, I love a good water slide yep. yeah, yeah yeah it's yeah. fabulous and i used to <laughs> <laughs> movie world obviously has like the blues brothers themes and the band and i see that's warner brothers movie world so correct, correct. Yes. yeah yeah that's it and, and dream world is more the I assume, I assume that's sort of sleeper dream world or no, 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 no. <laughs> that, but dream world has lands and it's more the rides and that the sort of thing and there's a, a they have a tiger show and they've got okay. the koalas as well the wallaby but it's, it's, but it's mainly the, the rides yeah the the big dippers and all yeah. that sort of stuff okay the roller coasters yeah, yeah and things that'll called. spin you and put you upside down and things like that okay yes yes <laughs> and the other thing that the gold coast does have quite often it's a big sporting area they've got their own sort of football team or our, fo- our sort of football which is our mm-hmm. yeah they, they, they sure. haven't yeah so there's, it, there's quite a lot of sporting events that go on we're actually going back to the to the gold coast in a couple of weeks and it's called the gold coast 500 and it's the v8 supercars yeah, and it's a street circuit so they close off all the main streets there in surface paradise and these cars race around now we don't go for the v8 supercars we go for the race before which is the porsche carrera cup and that's because Lyle's godson is the current Australian Porsche Carrera Cup champion and he's racing there and it's one of the only times we get to see him. Yeah, because yeah. all this year he's basically been Based in, in Europe. Europe. So yeah. that's a really... But just the hype that goes with this event, you can imagine like it's, it's fast cars and there's loud music and it's a street circuit and it's just... It's full on. <laughs> it is full on, yeah. It, the other thing, it, there's a big convention centre down near the casino so there's often whatever's going on, there's a often things that you can go and see at the convention center as well and when you talk about the first one the v super 8 and i it, it's a course through town yes it's not a it's not a race course no, no, it's no, not no. Off the long beach here in the u.s is that also true with then with the porsche or is that in a yep yep same, yeah. same okay yeah yep. 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 so they just race um earlier or later on the same day yeah okay yeah, so it's it's uh, not all the races for those events are street races. Most of them okay. are on tracks, but this is that's why it's so popular because people they're in their high rise apartments and they're overlooking the right. race track and it's just they've got this real there's dis, there's uh, DJs playing and it's it's just got this real party. So atmosphere. if I'm not interested in the racing, I might mm-hmm. not want to come when it's there because the prices are probably going to go up a yeah, bit. Ma- maybe but this is right in surface so if we've got friends that live there and they're not affected at all obviously they're not paying for accommodation but even like where we're talking about broad beach even further a bit south they've got other things going on they're not not affected but yes probably that weekend because it's only on a weekend okay. you might steer clear for visiting um, yeah and that last year when we were there in the surface which is right in surface is the car racing and in broad beach where we were staying which was only about a six minute tram ride there was the ground water country music festival yeah, yeah. So on the same weekend and th- there was just country music everywhere yeah. which was like it was a great weekend yeah yeah so that's yeah so there's all sorts of things to do but there's a few other things that we we'd like to chuck throw in there i was going to say chuck in there that's probably not a, the best expression the gold coast has a reputation for nightlife and there's a couple of really unique sort of cabaret shows yeah. that okay. are certainly worth seeing it's just which day you want to put them on whether you do have a relaxing day and put it on so the first one which we've been to a couple of times which is a whole lot of fun is called dracula's it's next to the casino but right across the road from pacific shopping fair like we were talking about before at the broad beach 
It's like this big castle and everybody in the show, not even in the show, the host and everything, they're all the in... The staff, yeah. They're all in theme. And it's vampire theme. Yes, of course. And, I yeah. I <laughs> and you start the night by hopping on a little haunted train ride. Yeah, ghost train. <laughs> which sort of takes you and there's things coming out and scaring you and then you end up... It's like a theatre restaurant and okay. you end up in your chair eventually and the show is fabulous. And it's not really a... A story. They've just got eclectic acts. You've got your folk singers, you've got glow in the dark performers, you've got magicians, you've got rock bands. You've got aerial yeah. performers, you've, you've got comedians. I reckon it goes for about two and a half hours and it's just mind blowing. And it's as cheap as chips and it's a three course meal and even your dessert comes out in a chocolate coffin. <laughs> And, it, like, and the food was oh, like... Actually, oh. it's like you eat the chocolate coffin. You just, yeah, like, yeah. It's on your plate. Like this. Yeah. yeah it's... Um, and it, like I come from the hospitality Drink. industry and the way they get the meals out and the quality of the meals is just outstanding. Yeah. And it's just a really good night. I, I love going down every time we go. It's okay. a lot of fun. And, and it changes all the time too. So you don't know... Uh-huh. Yeah, not all the time. Obviously, they have a run and then they... they get a whole lot of new artists in and or different acts and and then the, the other place is called the outback spectacular yeah and this is really if you're coming from anywhere that's not australia this is true blue aussie yeah is, and it's in an arena yeah it's actually in down near where the theme parks are the way they've got it set up yeah again this it's, does tell a story though yeah this it, does tell it a, tells a story about farming in the outback through the drought they've got okay. you know, farmers on horseback Everyone gets a cowboy hat, don't they? You yeah, know, yeah, a stockman's hat. A stockman's hat. hat, and you're sitting in the arena and you, you're having your Aussie meal and you're watching this this story. And I saw it quite a, a few years ago, and I, I think it's even upgraded since then because now they've got, as part of it, obviously there's technology and light shows and things that go with it as well. So it's a whole immersive Aussie outback experience. So fabulous night out on the Gold Coast. Isn't it? Yeah, I think it's a really good and, way. And also dinner theatre is my yes. yes. Yeah, it's a three-course yeah. dinner. And it's basically, I think the choice is a eye fillet steak and Aussie roast stuff. chicken and that sort of stuff. And <laughs> good old Yeah, good. But the, the light shows are just unbelievable. The way they're able to make you feel like you're in a drought area and you're on the hmm. farm. And of course, the the horse riders. I was going to say the horse riders impress me. Yeah, yeah, they're they're stunt riders. Yeah. So sure. it's uh, but it's you know for, I I think for anybody that coming from overseas, I think it really gives the uh, a good impression of how Australian how harsh the outback can be. Yeah, mm. for sure. sure. Mm. Yeah, it's but well worth my my uncle who owned a cattle station for a while during a drought in Queensland. Oh. Uh, told a few stories about that experience yeah so. it's pretty harsh yeah pretty tough they gotta be tough he must be a tough guy something else you could do is you could hop on a train and within sort of 45 minutes you're in brisbane you know the capital mm-hmm. city of queensland we love going to brisbane as well if you have a bit more time than a, than a week you certainly would, would go in and look on the brisbane river there the city the botanic yeah. gardens the south bank area. They, they call it the river the city there's so much to see and it's beautiful yeah it's, seriously beautiful yeah. We, so yeah we but that's a you could easily do that as a day trip as well and another day trip you can actually do as a, as a tour or you, if you've got a car it's only maybe an hour and a half max down to the famous byron bay a lot of people have heard of byron bay because there's a lot of movie actors live there like chris hemsworth and Zac Efron was there for a yeah, while, I think, yeah. and it's Matt got, Damon, I think, has yeah. got a place there. And it's it's just this beautiful little coastal area, but it's got a lighthouse walk, so, you know, there's a lovely hike around there, and it's actually Australia's most eastern point. At, yeah, so that's okay. another day trip, and there's some more national parks and hikes in that area yeah, as well. Yeah, you've got Kingscliff, not even as far as that, and yeah. Kingscliff's is beautiful too yeah, on the so New South Wales. A whole lot of stuff you could do, but, but what we'd like to do now, though, is tell you some of the really nice restaurants that we've found. Obviously, there's... Okay. there's a lot of them, but we've got a few favourites, haven't we? Yeah. I'm going to start with my favourite. That'll be the Yakoya. No? Oh. <laughs> Actually, I thought I forgot about the Yakoya. And there's a place called Mamasans, and it's basically uh, at Broad Beach. Asian fusion, isn't it, really? Yeah. yeah. And seriously, uh, yeah, I'll got... give you, I'll give you, and they've, oh. they've got share plates and that sort of thing, and they actually... They won I, the, the wine year, list of the year or something, Yeah, the, didn't year, they? the last year, which was yeah. last year we were there. Yeah. So they've got a fabulous wine list, which is obviously very important. Um, but we'll be going back there. When we go down in a couple of weeks, we're going straight back to Mamasans. That's sense. ocean trout sashimi with black and chilli dressing. And then you've got <laughs> crab slaw 
which is with shredded mixed cabbage with balsamic coriander and wasabi mayo. Tell me about that duck one. That's the one I love, the duck okay. pancakes. Duck pancakes with sweet hoisin cucumber and shallots. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. Ah, uh, you've <laughs> got... So there's a whole lot of different size sharing places. Morton Bay. Have yeah. you heard of Morton Bay Bugs, Chris? I have not heard of Morton Bay Bugs. Morton Bay bugs are like a, a. Well, that's Morton Bay, right out yeah, there. Yeah, Morton Bay is just like out a here. Smaller... I assume it's like a lobster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But smaller. And, but that, it's a sweeter meat. Mm. Yeah. It's and sweeter they meat. In that, and, don't oh, they? Yeah, they've got Morton Bay we, bugs. We probably don't have to do the whole menu. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, just, and for, then... just for time here. Okay, fair enough. But yeah, so the menu's fabulous. There's a lot of share plates. As Leanne said, there's a restaurant called Akoya, yeah. and that's at the Langham Hotel, and that's a seafood buffet. Yeah, every sort of oyster you want, you, you get all the seafood as much as you want. We couldn't get enough of that, and it's fresh. That was amazing. It's a bit more expensive, 119 I think, per person, but... You should know that. Yeah, I should know that. We thought it was a bit more than that. <laughs> we thought it was 199 and we said, yeah, we'll go. And then when we came out, and the, it was absolutely magnificent. And we th- it was about $80 cheaper yeah. than we thought. And what we thought he said was 190 it was 119 Yeah. But so, they've got well, and, and at the time we were recording this, yes. 119 Australian is about 76 US. Be, so no, there's the right. U.S. discount here. Yeah. If people are yeah. Yeah. And then, then there's the Hidden Kitchen, which is down Broad Beach, which once again, you go through this little cafe and then out the back there's this big courtyard and it's Asian fusion again and it's quite a reasonable price, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's relatively cheap. But if using the American dollar, <laughs> discount, everything's yeah. going to be cheap. Yeah. yeah. And as we said, we certainly recommend the surf clubs. There's right. every Right. Little beach place has its own surf club, so all the way up, and they have the traditional the fish and chips and the steaks, and they're all reasonably priced. Yeah, all of yeah. them okay. because they're making money. They subsidise those sorts of the meals for for families, and not not subsidised so much, but they don't charge too much money for them. No. And obviously, Stray is known for its seafood. Right. And they're on the coast, so you'd be crazy if you like seafood not to try it. I think one of the reasons why the food's so good, especially in the Gold Coast, is because of the concentration of restaurants. Mm. It has to be good. If you're going to succeed, it has to be good. Mm. And Because there's just restaurants yeah. everywhere. And the casino, the casino has a lot of pretty high up-end, like high-end restaurants as, as, as yeah, well. They've yeah, they've got Italian, Japanese, they've got a roof bar, they've got... So the food at the, the casino is pretty damn good as well. Yeah. And you can go to the casino without going anywhere near the gambling areas. Sure, the there's a really good piano bar that mm. operates seven nights a week. If mm. we go there, we will often go there before we sort of go into the drafters. We'll call into the casino at the piano bar. And the quality of the artists are really probably good. the best yeah. in Australia. Yeah. Hmm. And that costs you nothing. But what, uh, one thing apart to, from the drinks. To really apart be apart from the drinks, yeah. <laughs> where of you, though, before we, I think we've come to the end of our seven day itinerary, really, is you did mention before that if you weren't into motorsports, that that's probably not the weekend to go. But, this, and this is something that the guidebooks won't tell you, probably. You want to avoid the Gold Coast, especially the Surface Paradise area. There's two weeks in November, and I, I think you would call it spring break, maybe, okay. with schoolies. And it's basically all the kids that have finished their high school studies, so year 12, they're 17, 18 years old. They all converge on the Gold Coast, the Surface Paradise area, that one area, for schoolies. And they have events on, and they have police, and they have medical, and they have you support people, and like it, and then you've got to pay to get into the events and stuff. It, it is... It's run properly. So unless I'm that age and that's the scene I'm looking for, yeah. probably yeah. not my week. You don't want to go there, no. In fact, if, if you did, they have a name. Instead of a schoolie, you'd be called a toolie. So you don't <laughs> want to go there. And, I didn't know she was going to say that. <laughs> uh, so, it, But you can get caught up and there's obviously there's a lot of kids drinking that don't know that shouldn't be drinking and it, it can get a bit... But just on experience. Yeah, yeah. and because Queensland schools finish a week earlier, so they go first and then the New South Wales schools... They, then they come up for the week. So there's those two weeks that you certainly do not want to go to the Gold Coast. Yeah, that would be definitely. Got it. Good to know. Yes. It's also Excellent. a good spot that you can, if you're not long in Australia, you can, as I said, hop on the plane. There's a really good airport that goes all over the rest of Australia as well. Yeah, I mean, we do these in one week itinerary chunks, but it doesn't mean you can't combine this with one of the many other episodes we have done, as long as you're flying all the way to Australia, depending on where your starting point is. I, I certainly recommend, recommend people. Episode and yeah, down 
It's one of our favourite places in Australia too. Excellent. And you can fly to New Zealand out of the Gold Coast. And we've just come back from there. Mm. Excellent. Are we ready to do some of our wrap-up questions here? Sure. Let's go. You know what's coming here. I'm standing in the prettiest spot on the Gold Coast. Where am I standing at and what am I looking at? If I was brave, I'd be up the Q1 on the outside of that <laughs> platform. But, but I'm going to say I'm standing at one of the lookouts on Tambourine Mountain, just looking back down over the lush green hills, back down to the sea, for sure. I, I thought you might be okay. Yeah. One thing that makes you laugh and say only in the Gold Coast. Meet mates. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. I'm still surprised that it is a today thing, not just a 19... 19- Mm-hmm. 50s or 60s thing or something. Well, the Beatles must have liked it. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. And then if you had to summarize the region in just three words, what three words would you use? Oh, yeah, you, you, you got me with that one. It would have to be surf, obviously, glamour, mm. and probably... Fun. Fun, yeah. Excellent. It's a lot of fun. Our guests again are Leanna and Lyle McCabe, and we forgot to mention your website because at the beginning here, but you're from beachtravelwine.com, which would have made your comment about you'd have to have wine be a lot more obvious. <laughs> <laughs> if we wanted to send people to the best post on the Gold Coast at beachtravelwine.com, where are we going to send people? You would go to Beach Travel Wine, our podcast page, and episode 39. We've done our own episode on it, but I've also done a blog post on the Gold Coast there. Yeah, check that out. Excellent. And you are at how many episodes now for your podcast? I've just recorded number 75. I know that doesn't sound much compared to 800-odd, but... um, Most podcasts end by 10. Oh, there we go. So 75 is an accomplishment. Don't uh, sell yourself short. And these are all places we've been to as well. Excellent. Excellent. Thanks for coming back on the show and talking to us about your love for the Gold Coast. You're welcome. And we'll see. hopefully talk again soon. Thanks, Chris. A special thanks to the patrons of the show who help support Amateur Traveler with their donations. If you're interested in becoming a patron of the show and supporting this endeavor, feel free to learn more by going to patreon.com slash amateur traveler. I got feedback from the show recently, and I don't remember where I got it from, so I can't find who I got it from. I apologize, but it was useful feedback, so even though I'm embarrassed to read it without the person's name who sent it, I did want to read it. And it's feedback on the older episode we did on Thailand on Kanchanaburi. It says, hey, Chris, I'm just messaging you as I follow your podcast, which has been super helpful for my travels. I just wanted to let you know that one of the elephant sanctuaries that you recommended in your Kanchanaburi episode is not actually very ethical, and elephants are kept in cages when there are no tourists around. Unfortunately, this is very common in Thailand for places to say they are sanctuaries, but don't really let their elephants roam free. I'm asking you to please edit your podcast to not recommend it any further. And there's an article here that I'll include the link in the show notes to an article on The Guardian about this. This lists some conservation-approved sanctuaries. The one in Chiang Mai I have experienced for myself to be the highest care and free-range elephants. And again, I apologize for not having the name right here. It's one of the reasons I ask people if you have any comments to send me an email to host at amateurtraveler.com because this ends up in my email as I get ready to process this And if it doesn't end up on my email, I have to remember to copy all the right information and send it to myself. But in terms of editing episodes, I don't ever edit episodes. I just honestly don't have time. Uh, I can't go back and edit older episodes. I may not even have the source for episodes anymore to go back and edit them. And honestly, with a full-time job and two podcasts that I'm doing in the evenings, Uh, there's just no time to go back and edit anything older. But I do want to correct things, and so I will put this information in this episode. There are still some spots in the Amateur Traveler trip to Morocco next April in 2024. If you're interested, go to amateurtraveler.com slash trips. And with that, we're going to end this episode of the amateur traveler if you have any questions send an email to host at the amateur 
or better yet, leave a comment on this episode at AmateurTraveler.com. And thanks so much for listening.